right, welcome back, everybody. And um, with me, I have Wes and Emma directly from the DEF CON floor. So welcome. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear us now? I can hear you now. Awesome. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. Yeah, definitely live from the floor here, a lot going on. Uh, still a lot of excitement for a Sunday night uh, or Sunday day, right? But uh, how are things going with you, Omar? Doing well, doing well. It's a busy day, but uh, but doing perfect. Um, the biggest biggest thing we got about an hour left of our finals. We do. Uh, we have one team that uh, they are, I think, either one hundred or two hundred points shy. I think it's one hundred points shy of closing it out, of getting everything. So that's pretty epic. Uh, and then we got a few other teams that are, you know, kind of jockeying for second and third there. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens over the next hour. We had a lot of movement on the qualifiers right right towards the end, last couple hours, so we're really pumped to kind of see what, what comes with that. But one of the big things that kind of makes this uh, CTF happen, uh, kind of makes it all possible, is Hack the Box. So we have Emma here with Hack the Box. And because of them, uh, I'd say Hack the Box has been a partner for probably like two and a half, three years yeah, now. Something like that. Uh, doing a lot of uh, essentially like epic prize donations for us every single event. Uh, tons of pro labs, VIP labs, academy cubes, uh, stickers, T-shirts, everything. Like it is amazing what we're able to give away. Uh, and I would say uh, you're one of our longest, uh, one of the longest kind of sponsors that we've had. And uh, all of our CTF players know that you know they come play, and just the the sheer amount of uh, swag and prizes and everything that they give out that there's there's a good chance they're going to get it. Uh, and that's one of the biggest things, you know, kind of. Uh, with the Hack the Box community is able to uh, uh, give out prizes to everyone so you don't have to come in first, second, and third, right? We do surveys, we do giveaways, Twitter, you know, in DEF CON, we had a few uh, kind of pop-up uh, giveaways every now and then, so just had to run down here within 10 minutes or whatever to get something. Uh, you know, people that are just being awesome in, like, Discord, helping other people out, we're able to kind of give them Academy Cubes, all sorts of things. So yeah. do you want to talk a little bit about uh, maybe some of the things that you guys offer? Yeah, for sure. We love to give out prizes to tons of different events so we can help encourage the learning of everyone. Everything from Academy Cube, which is our latest big product where we have started to move into the more educational courses. We also have our Pro Lab offerings, which is great for everyone who's brand new to experience where it's full networks where you can practice all your skills. And we also have smaller machines and individual challenges which you can, we have a set of 20 active machines where everyone can access that for free at any point. And then we have our retired machines, which are free with write-ups, but you can access the latest two, or you can pay a monthly subscription and get your own private instance and everything, which is great for learning and just learning everything. So no, definitely. And yeah. uh, I would say like there, there's a lot of overlap in some of our styles, right? So like in our qualifiers, we have a lot of standalone boxes that are very similar. Uh, to kind of what are you talking about the the active machines uh, as well as the retired machines those individual kind of standalone so we have those and those are like amazing a lot of overlap there but then uh, we also have uh, for our finals like the in-depth uh, scenarios which is kind of like uh, Dante's lab I can't remember uh, what are the other pro labs that you have right now offshore cybernetics Rasta and APT labs awesome awesome so same thing our finals is just like that where you can actually, you know, VPN in, uh, you know, whether it's fishing, a lot of the same techniques, things like that that you kind of see, but just different scenarios. Uh, super in depth, super amazing. I had a chance to play one or two of uh, those pro labs. Uh, all I'll say, I, I got stuck once or twice. Uh, wasted probably a week on one one particular box. Uh, I know that's definitely different. You know, we have a 24 hour kind of time limit uh, for our CTF here. Uh, but yeah, I was banging my head against one of the boxes, uh, just trying to land. Uh, a covenant payload uh, learned a lot about like windows defender and evasion all that other stuff which you know may or may not have been important in our ctf finals uh we learned a lot about you know evasion with defender in this one a lot of the teams kind of leveled up quickly so with that uh, a lot of overlap between the two and that's why i think like we're a good fit that we kind of offer a similar product uh where you know we do this a couple times throughout the year a lot of fun but hack the box is able to kind of offer that you know on demand anytime you want yeah and like you can always access our stuff, which is great for practicing for these like shorter time limited events. A lot of the stuff overlaps and it's whenever you want, after work, during school, you can practice, learn and get ready for these bigger events and train. And we ourselves host like a few of those big events every year where we love to give out 
tons of prizes is for everyone. You know, you don't have to place great. You just got to participate, and we love to give out tons of those stuff. So. Oh, yeah, I, I think Emma just hit it on the head of like we have the, that same kind of uh, community feel, right? We want everyone to come out, learn something. Uh, we don't want you to get you know frustrated. It's easy just to say like try harder, right? Yeah. Uh, but we want you to learn, uh, and we will definitely walk you through, right? Unless you're a top three team, then we're not going to help you. But uh, outside of that, we want you to learn. We want you to have fun. Uh, we want you to level up. You know, come back out again. And uh, definitely get you know all sorts of swag, whether it's the, the cubes, the shirts, the stickers, all that good stuff. So, and the one other piece that I love, you know, we love coming out here and doing it free. Uh, and we couldn't do that without sponsors like Hack the Box. But the biggest thing, though, uh, as far as like value, right? Your your return on uh, investment for uh, training, I think Hack the Box has that, right? So whether it's the cubes or just the experience, right? Like you can start off for free, no price on on the twenty active machines. Uh, but then just for a rather small amount, you can actually get, you know, the VIP lab or the pro labs, you know, they're pretty cost effective. You can do the Academy cubes if there's particular topics you want. So, uh, yeah, we also have uh, a good few Academy modules for free where you can just give it a shot, try it out. You start off with, I think, 40 cubes. And once you complete one of the modules, you get a certain amount of cubes back for the free ones. You get 10 back, so at 40, so it's free. And no matter what, you always get something back. We also have offerings for the business side. So if you want to train your whole team, you can reach out to us for that. So that's a good way. No, it definitely. That, that's happy. There's definitely a lot that you can do there. Uh, I've been a part of companies that, you know, have done some of the private servers, things like that. Uh, it's really great team building experience, kind of bring your whole team together, do it together. Uh, you kind of level up your workforce skills. So huge shout out uh, again to Hack the Box. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, token of our appreciation we got we got a coin and a t-shirt for you right. uh, a few other things but uh, i know it pales in comparison to uh, what hack the box gives us right. multiple times throughout the year so we love uh, to sponsor as many events as we can get out with the community and make sure everyone learns something even if you don't get root as long as you get a good learning experience out of it that's what matters <laughs> uh, so thank you so much emma for coming out yeah, and sure. uh, spend some time with us uh omar you got anything for emma Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Very good. I didn't want to interrupt your conversation and I double muted myself. So, uh, no, once again, uh, I echo what Wes mentioned. Thank you so much for all the support, not only this year, but throughout the years. You have been amazing, not only to the Directing Village, but the whole community as a whole. So, um, anything that you want to highlight from the, from the, um, the scoreboard here? Oh, okay. I see. I've seen a little bit of movement. I think kind of between the uh, fourth and fifth teams, uh, they look tied now. So uh, and not that far off from uh, third place. So we, I, th I think we can definitely see some movement. They got about fifty-ish minutes left. So uh, I don't know. I don't. I think we have first place pretty much locked in. But uh, I think second and third is still up for grabs. So awesome. definitely get in there, submit the flags. Um, Huge shout out to our team doing support kind of back end. Uh, they've been amazing on the uh, CE Red Team Discord, uh, DEF CON Discord channel. So definitely hit up any of our uh, folks out there if you're having issues or anything like that. Uh, again, like thank you to all our volunteers that came out here, as well as all the players that came out. We couldn't, you know, over 2,000 players that we had in the qualifiers, you know, something like 22,000 flags submitted. Uh, it was just epic, the amount of participation that we had and the number of people that came up to the booth as well as people playing virtually in Discord. We loved it. Uh, and then now with our final team, we even had one or two final teams uh, come by the booth. So that was that was awesome, kind of meet them in person. So a huge shout out to them. And then uh, definitely looking forward uh, to uh, sending out some swag to the top uh, three. Awesome. And as a matter of fact, you just touched on something real quick. One of the questions that we're getting all the time is, uh, "Hey, what what are we expecting from the top three? Um, what are what are the prices?" Oh, we got a little bit of everything. Uh, we definitely have a number of courses to include uh, some of the uh, hack the box, whether it's uh, the VIP, the Academy Cubes, a few other things to hand out. Uh, and I know definitely some of the some of the first place teams have quite a few people on them. So we got that as well as uh, various courses from Sector 7, uh, Offensive Security. So there's a lot out there that we haven't uh, you know, totally given away. So definitely big swag. Uh, 
thing. But the biggest thing that we're going to do is we have a giveaway or not giveaway, but uh, we're going to give them some coins. So we are custom coins uh, from I think you've seen them in some of our Twitters. Uh, but either way, the Red Team Village in particular for this year, the, the Dunder Mufflin uh, scenario or theme. So huge shout out. They'll get a couple of those uh, as well as some virtual prizes. So since all the international ones, you know, it's kind of hard to do all the international shipping, but they're going to get some some good virtual swag as well as you know a few uh, physical gifts there just to make it uh, worthwhile. So very very cool. Thank you. Thank and, you, uh, Mark. Two two things. Um, you mentioned yesterday that anybody can actually create their own walkthrough video and then tweet the Red Team Village CTF and the CTF. Um, you know we're advertising that down below. Uh, anything else that you want to expand on on that? Uh, yes. So I know we get a lot of the questions of. Uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit different uh, than like Hackbox. We don't release kind of walkthroughs on a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I know if, with their Academy Cubes, they, they have a lot of that training, release everything. Uh, but even though we don't publicly release kind of walkthroughs for our challenges, we may down the road, uh, we're thinking about it. But what we do encourage though, we want everyone who does them to do a write up. We love seeing those. I love, for me personally, like if I make a challenge, I love seeing someone else's mindset, like what they thought of it, right? I want to I want to know good and bad, right? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was this frustrating? But was it frustrating in a good way or in a bad way? So we love seeing them. And uh, if you tweet with Red Team Village or the author of the challenge uh, that's listed in all the challenges or myself or uh, Pony IP, we will go ahead and blast that out, right? So, you know, if you uh, low key looking for, you know, some, some traffic to your site, whatever, uh, get, you know, the blog posts or GitHub pages, just do a walkthrough, shoot it to us, and then well, we'll blast it out because we love reading them, and then we love just you know pushing them out there for other people because we get those questions a lot. Definitely after an event, uh, we shoot them out to some of the other people when they call and they, hey, I got this question about this challenge, I don't know how to do it, and be like, well, this other player they did a write up for it. Here you go, check it out. So please do write ups, tag us in it, and we'll you know we'll retweet uh, and like it. So awesome, and I'm just. Trying to type super fast in here, but I put a banner <laughs> down below with your Twitter handle. So uh, Wes is not researcher and also Pony IP. So if you tag them both, uh, please uh, do so. And then the last uh, announcement, you, what you just mentioned, you know, please join the conversation at the DEF CON official server. Uh, and I have the link in the bottom of the screen as, as well as the, the channel. So with that, thank you again, Emma, so much for your time and your help. So, Emma, one last, one last thing. How can we get a hold of you? Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at 0xemma. Uh, shoot me an email if you guys want to talk about anything. Emma at hackthebox.eu. Those are great ways. Perfect, perfect. So, definitely, uh, any you know questions for Emma or the Hack the Box team, reach out. Uh, Emma's community manager, so definitely loves hearing from people. So, please, you know, reach out, hit them up, uh, hit them up on Twitter, any kind of thing like that. So, great stuff there. So. Uh, again, thank you so much to Hack the Box. Thank you so much to our players. Uh, hope you have fun. Still about 45 minutes. If you want to stop by the booth, last 45 minutes, that's great. If not, we'll see uh, most of everyone at closing ceremonies uh, for just the announcement of the winners. But uh, 45 minutes, please, you know, keep on submitting those flags. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks.
Knock, knock, who's there? This guy. What's up, red teamers? What's up, DEF CON? It's your favorite fake, brilliant billionaire investor. My little birdies, cheap, 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 cheap. I like cheap things, that's why I'm rich. They let me know that Lunar Fire is under fire, but that is a Tres Comas company. And that's got so much smart shit in it. And so it's unhackable. Or is it? No, it isn't. Not even you boy and girl geniuses can do it. You would have to be the human equivalents of cars with doors that open like this or like this. Are you? Can you? Will you? Don't. Hello, everyone. I'm Barry Darnell from the Red Team Village, and today we are here with Omar Santos from the Red Team Village, as well as our guest, Ipsec, from Hack the Box. Hey, guys. What's going on? Oh. Uh, Ipsec, uh, Hack the Box has been a longtime supporter of the Village. Uh, can you tell me more about the company? Yeah. Um, Hack the Box is a hands-on security training platform, and our main goal is to make good training readily available to anyone in the world. If you're new to a topic or just the field in general, we have Hack the Box Academy, and it's a guided learning experience, which just means we have written material and hands-on labs. And again, when building this, accessibility was our number one desire. So we created the Pwn Box, which allows you to have a whole operating system in your browser, so the machine you're doing this learning on doesn't even have to be powerful. You can do it on like a Chromebook. If for some reason you want to do it on a phone, you can. I wouldn't recommend that. But everything's done within a web browser. If you want to bring your own OS, we also provide a VPN pack for you so you can join your OS to the VPN and go on learning. In addition to the academy, we have unguided learning, which is what we're most famous for. This is the weekly challenges machines or entire like networks we put out on the platform and that we ask people not to publicly talk about these challenges until they retire, which is typically 20 weeks. This is my favorite and what I credit most of my success to because it really enforces building good social relationships that not only help get you the help when you need it, but also when teaching, it often validates your understanding of it and it's proven to help memory retention. So I have a lot of friends from my in my social network that include Barry. I met him through another friend who met him at DerbyCon, which is a similar event of Red Team Village. And the funny thing is, both my other friend, Kyle and Barry, all lived within like 30 miles of each other, but we met like hundreds of miles away. So definitely like important to go view and travel and experience the community because you'll never know who you find and how close people may be. It's a small world. Absolutely. I think we've all been cooped up these last uh, few months here. I think a lot of people are excited to go in person to Las Vegas to attend DEF CON. And so we're really excited to see some of our old friends and, and make some new ones. Um, speaking of, of, of that community, you know, Hack the Box is a very vibrant community, both on their Discord as well as all over Twitter. Can you tell me a little bit more about the people behind Hack the Box, maybe some projects that you might be working on? Yeah, we have a innovation team that's designed at like pushing what we think is the limit. So typically, most of our stuff is either a Docker or a VMware image. And the innovation team is looking into Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure to provide a pro lab called Black Sky, which is just based upon those types of features. So if you want to exploit IAM or do a lot of those unique cloud things, Black Sky Lab is going to be that. We also have, as you said, the Discord community. We have Roadrunner who runs that. And they help provide a lot of good support and just learning to anyone in addition to a bunch of CTFs. I think we run the CTF like every other month or something. It's insane. Well, talking about the CTF and talking about all the activities, you know, throughout the years, you guys have supported the Red Team Village tremendously. So first of all, thank you and thank you, uh, Hack the Box. So uh, one of, I got a couple of questions, right? So one of the questions is, you know, what would you say that is the best part about sponsoring community efforts like the Red Team Village CTF this year? I mean, obviously it helps the community grow and most of my like relationships, I can credit almost all my professional success as to leeching off my friend's knowledge because no one can know everything. And I can't speak for anyone at Hack the Box, but I know a bunch of my friends at Hack the Box are super excited to play a CTF built by other people. And we've played the Red Team Village CTS for quite a while. Um, I vaguely remember one, I think two years ago, that involved exploiting a printer, which was new to all of us. We were all like big um, 
binary exploit people and then threw a different architecture at us that we never really experimented with. And it was just a lot of fun to play. So super excited to sponsor an event that we can participate in and learn new things to hopefully put out on our platform in the future. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I think that you're hitting my next question, which is why do you think sponsoring the the Red Team Village this year is so important for the community? Yeah, um, number one, it's important to, like, with COVID and all, we want to increase the socialization and everything. We've been all cooped up. And the Red Team Village incorporates all of Hack the Boxes things. The main thing was being accessible. Um, if you can't travel, you can do it online and form a team. And additionally, if you want, it's available for the high cost of $0, which aligns with kind of our methodology and what we want. All our machines are available for free for a time. And then once they retire, then you have to pay a small fee to gain access to it because hosting 150 images permanently would just be expensive. Can't do that for free. Um, additionally, I believe InfoSec is a unique profession where team building activities have immeasurable impact. If you look at the non-InfoSec teams, they still do team building activities. Like you have that gimmicky trust fall and escape room, et cetera. And they're doing them just to help build that social bond between coworkers. So you know it's valuable since that's the only thing they care about. In the InfoSec world, we have CTFs that is just like that on steroids. It has all that same social bonding benefits. Like I mentioned earlier, I play CTS with Barry. I've played CTS with OXDF, Mr. Ben, John Hammond, a bunch of people. I just have a lot of fun with playing these CTS along with coworkers. And in addition to that social bond that you build, it also gives you a lot of techniques that you may be able to immediately provide your work value because you're joining hands with a bunch of other companies to learn things. It wouldn't surprise me if you do the CTF and then find something you can immediately turn around to do on your job. I remember doing almost any pro lab, I'll use Offra as an example, where the foothold involves exploiting Splunk. And I had a pen test that I kept missing this vector on because I just didn't know it and Mr. Ben put it in that pro lab. So when I did that, it was just like an eye-opening thing of, oh God, what have I been missing? So definitely the big social aspect is huge here. Awesome. And, and uh, I couldn't agree more. And, and, and once again, you know, thank you. I have one more last question. When it's around the benefits that your team actually will receive by participating at the, you know, DEF CON Red Team Village CTF this year. Yeah, um, Hack the Box and Red Team Village are almost anonymous in what we provide and our methodologies. So the only unfortunate thing is the Red Team Village CTF is a yearly thing, while Hack the Box produces new things on a weekly basis. It's probably not to the scale that Red Team Village will be doing just because it's constant. But if you're itching to do more after doing the CTF, definitely check out the platform if you haven't and go over to Hack the Box because I'm sure you'll love the challenges we put on the site. Awesome. So once again, thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you, Hack the Box, you know, for sponsoring the Red Team Village. And I hope to see you at DEF CON. Have yeah, take care. Stand. Why are humans like this?
don't understand. Why are humans like this? <laughs>
Welcome everyone, I'm Bear Darnell with the Red Team Village and I'm here today with Ryan Dory and Matt Eidelberg from Optiv. Hey everybody. Hello. How's it going? Ryan and Matt, uh, thank you so much for being here today and I want to uh, thank Optiv for being a sponsor for the Red Team Village CTF this year. Your support really helps uh, and, and it goes a long way at uh, allowing us to provide a big event both in person and virtually. Can you tell me a little bit more about Optiv? Yeah, absolutely. So to put it very simply, Optiv is a pure play cybersecurity partner. And what does that mean? Uh, we, we aim to do secure, all security all the time, right? We can help in ways of advisory deployment and even manage operations, right? So ultimately our, our goal is very simply to uh, help organiza organizations realize a more effective uh, security program and posture. And uh, for, for both of you specifically, what, what do you do at Optiv? So I'm a senior director inside of threat management, which is a larger umbrella, but I specifically have the privilege of leading our attack and pen team. Um, so my focus is on the direction of success of that team, and I achieve this largely by enabling uh, the great folks around me, such as uh, Mr. Eidelberg here. And I'm a technical manager under uh, attack and pen. My primary role is leading the adversarial simulation services. This is our uh, branch that focuses primarily on red and purple team operations. My role in there is not only executing these types of engagements, but also focusing on helping to innovate the team and grow uh, more operators to perform these types of engagements. All right, and uh, and for the for that uh, attack and pen practice, uh, why do you like working there? Yeah, so for me, uh, first and foremost, uh, it's it's the close family atmosphere that we have on the team. Uh, and what I mean by that is I've been on the team for almost nine years now. I've been in Attack and Pen the entire time, and I'm not alone in that. There's several other individuals on the team that, that have been here for a similar amount of time, such, a, such as Matt himself. So what that yielded is a really good dynamic uh, of folks to work well together while we uh, simultaneously you know, pursue our passion of offensive security. And just to add on to that, I would say in a single word, the community. Uh, the team itself uh, honestly strives constantly to push the boundaries, to teach each other new things, whether or not it's a, you know, failures from previous engagements to help educate for future uh, kind of tests or even success stories. It's all about sharing and kind of bolstering each other through knowledge sharing. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and a plug for that, that giving back to the community aspect, you know, I was on your GitHub the other day and uh, I was looking into Scarecrow and I know I've got that on my list to do a deep dive on after after DEF CON. You know, love, love the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of big players in uh, information security share that research, share that tooling that they create. Yep. That's what we strive to do here. And for your team, um, you know, what types of people work there? What are their backgrounds? So it's a, it's a good variety of backgrounds, right? So we have folks uh, some, from being a, a good part of us being veterans uh, to business-minded folks, to engineering folks, et cetera, right? Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, there, there's the ultimate uh, commonality, right, of, of a shared objective of offensive and passion for offensive security testing. And then what we qualify that success really is, is helping leave our clients better than we found them at the end of the day. And of course, you know, folks have a very specific uh, or can have a specific subset of interest inside the team. Uh, that could be of IoT to embedded to wireless to low level window stuff to evasion, um, et cetera, right? So there's definitely some, some sub pockets for people to really go a mile deep on. Great. And with such a diverse group, uh, what makes somebody a success in AMP? So aside from uh, technical acumen, which obviously is held, you know, it's an important quality on this specific uh, role, right, uh, is the ability to show ownership and leadership and give back to the team. Um, really, you know, owning a specific service or an offering, uh, helping others, mentoring, et cetera, we hold that in incredibly high value. Um, and then as we mentioned earlier with regard to um, like Source Zero and Scarecrow, right, is the, the public thought leadership to help uh, the team immediately and then also give back to the community as well. And just to add on to that, I would say the eagerness to learn and improve your tradecraft. Um, 
honestly, the ones we see that excel the most are the ones that not only focus on themselves, but also make sure that they help their fellow teammates or coworkers, whether or not they're struggling with something or helping to help them also pursue and grow their talents. Those are the ones that I see often have the biggest success here. That's great. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is this is a team sport uh, doing what we do. <laughs> yep. Uh, for the for the red team village, one thing that we we uh, really love to do is is offer a lot of it, uh, environments for training. We do workshops. We 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 uh, participate in a lot of different cons. Um, and one thing you, you know we want to do is bring as many people into this community as possible. And so I'd I'd like to ask for both of you. Uh, you know, what is your advice for people who are interested in cybersecurity as a profession? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I'll speak to the, you know the path that I took to get here, and I think it, it holds true to the to the question, right? But it, I think it's very important and imperative for folks to have a a deep foundational understanding to, as to how uh, things work, right? So what I mean by that is how does Active Directory work? How does networking function? How can you manipulate these things to maybe work outside the bounds it was intended to, right? So that can apply to even development, web applications, etc. Um, oftentimes I get asked by people that are a bit younger and say in college or whatever, and they're like, hey, should I take this security class and become a pen tester? Well, I would really encourage folks to get a lot of those more foundational understandings to how things work before they move to the stage of trying to, you know, move to that adversarial emulation type part. Yep, and I would just add uh, to not just focus when you're learning on red team tactics. It's incredibly valuable in the current landscape to uh, focus on both blue and red team. Having that ability to speak both can really augment your skill set. And, you know, this is very much a cat and mouse game based industry. And just knowing both sides, their playbooks can really help you understand the strengths and weaknesses of both sides. So when you're coming up against, say, a red team or a blue team, you know what they are great at and what their weaknesses are to really help plan out those attacks or even your knowledge set to improve on. Those that is phenomenal advice. Uh, this industry is is a challenge because there's so much breadth and depth that you can take. Uh, not to mention that it's evolving every single day. So it's impossible to keep up. So you've you've got to have that thirst for knowledge. And uh, and without that foundation, it, it is quite difficult. I mean, you might throw that exploit and get that get that shell back, but then the question is, what do you do next, right? And so, uh, great advice. I want to thank both of you for being here today. Uh, thank you again for the sponsorship. Looking forward to uh, to meeting you in person and uh, and also with uh, with DefCon right around the corner. You know, uh, looking to to engage with old friends and 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 make some new ones. So so thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some folks out at DefCon. Yep.
Knock, knock, who's there, this guy? What's up, red teamers? What's up, DEF CON? It's your favorite fake, brilliant billionaire investor. My little birdies, cheap, 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 cheap. I like cheap things, that's why I'm rich. They let me know that Lunar Fire is under fire, but that is a Tres Comas company. And that's got so much smart shit in it. And so it's unhackable. Or is it? No, it isn't. Not even you boy and girl geniuses can do it. You would have to be the human equivalents of cars with doors that open like this or like this. Are you? Can you? Will you? Don't.
Yeah, I can sit here. Sit on this side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh. Hey, Omar. Hey, can you hear me, Omar? It's with the stream. Can't hear Omar. Oh, well, Omar, I can't hear you, but uh, hopefully you can hear us. Maybe give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. But we, we are. Uh, we you can know, hear you. I can hear you now. Perfect. Thank you. So we are definitely live from the floor. So. I'm here, Wes, also with my NAP researcher. Got Austin here with me. Uh, definitely one of our CTF Whoa. builders, uh, system dome on the on the on the tweeters. Uh, so either way, we got about two minutes left here. Looking at this scoreboard, there's a lot of movement, a lot of uh, you know, kind of back and forth. Well, first place though uh, has been pretty pretty rock solid, staying in first there. Uh, but we did we get any last minute movement between? Yes, yeah, Son of Anton jumped up a bit. I the boxes. Oh, so Son of Anton had a big jump. They were, they were tied for like fourth and fifth there, fourth and fifth for a little bit. So we saw a little bit of last movement. So we got approximately one minute left here. Then we are going to close down the scoreboard or pause the scoreboard. So with that, uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know, what, what any kind of commentary what you saw on the scoreboards I, movement? I just, I'm just, I can't say it enough. Uh, like, I'm just extremely impressed with like uh, all the teams. Like, a lot, most of the teams were able to to get into the into the network. Uh, I know Windows Defender was kind of giving uh, giving out some beatings, but uh, no, they ended up they ended up getting in. Uh, I've seen a lot of like innovation. Um, I mean, obviously, AI generated EPT are just absolutely killing it. Um, a lot of like really elite folks there. I'm just super impressed. I'm really glad that someone was able to to get through all the boxes um, and get all the way to the last box and, and get the last flag. I know uh, our one of our challenge designers who wrote that last uh, ponable. Um, he spent a lot of time and effort, and he was explaining to me how it works. And you know, I probably wouldn't have got that in a million years. So uh, God bless whatever <laughs> poor uh, reverser had to to kind of go through that. But um, you know, what what a champ. That's all I gotta say. That that's incredible. So it is. It is official. Uh, we, uh, you know, we will be closing, pausing the scoreboard here in a moment. But it is official. It is twelve o'clock, uh, local time here. So with that, the competition is over. So huge shout out to AI generated. Uh, they not only came in first place, but they got every single flag. Uh, we, I will tell you, last night uh, we were kind of having this whole debate and you know, kind of lead up to everything of, you know, are, is a team going to be able to kind of close this out and really. Uh, check off every box on the board and AI generated came through and did that. Uh, so super huge shout outs to them. Uh, very impressive work. Uh, yeah, the level of skill involved is just absolutely like mind boggling, especially in such a short time frame. Like I know it took us just walking through with the answers. It took us quite a long time to kind of get through. And I know there were some hiccups on the infrastructure side a little bit um, and some of the understanding on some of the callbacks and whatnot. But I'm really glad to see that they just absolutely like swept it out. And also a huge shout out to EPT. And Ben, the Hack Street Boys, um, great name, by the way. So don't forget, uh, definitely at closing ceremonies, uh, Hack Street Boys will be putting on a uh, short performance. Uh, they'll be uh, they'll be dancing uh, across the stage there for a little bit. Uh, so definitely come on out, see them. Uh, I don't know what song they're gonna pick, but it should be uh, pretty epic. Uh, but with that, yeah, definitely EPT and Hack Street Boys, like the the level of talent. I would say, like as we were going through and QAing this, you know, you're talking about the people who made this. Uh, going through and QAing the, the, the challenges, uh, making sure, you know, things worked as, as expected. Uh, we took a long time to kind of go through this scenario multiple times over and over again. And uh, we thought we, you know, we're getting faster each time, but we still we and, still never did it in 24 hours. And, and, you know, yeah, it's it's one thing to kind of go through knowing the answers. But then, uh, you know, you, when you're trying to design some of these puzzles and, and some of these challenges to, to be solvable and you're not sure if you give the right hints or whatnot. And, and we were kind of discussing amongst ourselves, like we're not sure if anybody's going to get through even to the second network. Um, and, and just, you know, with a scenario, right, of, of the supply side attack and kind of like uh, subverting that code base and then get execution in the second network. And we had uh, quite a few teams actually get into the second network, which I was impressed with and, and kind of right in that, that back door. Um, you know, just really impressed and, uh, and, and kind of like a true testament to, you know, it's a red team village CTF, great red teamers. Um, hopefully, you know, the teams had fun, um, learned a lot. I, I at least hope, I know I did. 
And then uh, as well, just, you know, hopefully this came close to at least somewhat of a realistic network or something you might see in a red team engagement. Um, and hopefully you found it was, was more related to current yep. events and kind of some of the, the the novel like APT techniques that we've seen from this year, um, especially on the threat intel side and uh, kind of reflected uh, in, in the two networks. So, so definitely, uh, I'll be honest, I, I, I think we lied to you all. Uh, we said there's going to be no uh, pen test report required at the end of this, but <laughs> Uh, you know, looking at the teams and like the talent that you had, uh, you know, if you happen to have any like walkthroughs or any, you know, the particular boxes or anything you want to share, you know, uh, we'd definitely love to see those write ups, you know, make sure to, you know, uh, if you uh, write up anything, put it out there, whether it's you know, on your blog or GitHub pages, whatever it is, right? We'd love to see it. So definitely tweet it out to, you know, Red Team Village, DM, uh, any of our folks either, uh, Pony IP, myself, not researcher, System Dumb, uh, and then we'll definitely uh, throw that out there. Uh, as well as retweet and all that. We love reading those, right? So whether it's qualifiers rounds or the actual finals, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing just kind of dig in and out, you know, kind of get a glimpse of that mindset that you had as you're going through the problem, uh, just to be able to see, you know, what, what you thought on solving this challenge. And then we also, you know, we design a lot of this with like a specific flow in mind of like, hey, we expect them to go this way. And, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, well, you know, they can use like these three different tools to accomplish that, or they can go this way or maybe that way. Uh, I love just seeing when someone does, you know, something totally creative, something I'm not familiar with. And I was just like, man, I didn't even think about doing it that way. So I love seeing that. Uh, so please, you know, definitely uh, if you if you're feeling froggy and you want to, um, you know, write up that pen test report, uh, please just, uh, you know, tweet it out to us. So then we could, you know, share it with the community and kind of let everyone know and uh, kind of get a glimpse into, uh, you know, what it was like doing the finals. So we'd love to hear from uh, any of the teams that are out there and uh, what their experiences were. Uh, yeah, if you have feedback, and then also, um, you know, if you if you see the handles on some of the challenge designers from Qualls, a lot of those people also worked on the finals too. Uh, you know, shout out to you know like Waldo and and, and Mike and uh, you know Conehead as well. People who are helping kind of like interface with with you all and answer questions. Uh, Bob Dole, <laughs> uh, uh, all, all those folks, Rob Payne. So definitely, uh, if you think about all the uh, the targets that you interacted with, right? There's a whole nother slew of support targets behind that. So with that, like so many boxes per network, right? And each team had their own instance. Uh, so we're talking about 20 instances for the top team. Uh, uh, definitely AWS loves us. Uh, we spent a pretty penny with them. But with that, you know, it, it takes a lot to kind of create that as well as support it, right? So huge shout out to our support team kind of running, you know, uh, sporadically kind of throughout the night. We tried, uh, you know, I know we weren't going to have, you know, coverage all night long, but uh, for part of the night, we were able to kind of get some of that coverage as well as in this morning, kind of help the teams along as, as they made it through the network. So huge shout out uh, again to uh, AI Generated. Uh, I'm looking forward to some feedback from you all, uh, seeing as you made it all the way through. Uh, we were a little worried with that binary exploitation at the, at the end. So yeah, uh, so, so impressed with, you know, the kind of skills. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, our uh, land HP designed that final uh exploit at the end there and uh, i think you would love some of your feedback and just kind of what yeah. you thought about that uh because we were we were geeking out about it last night so yeah we want to know um but yeah again big shout out to ept uh and then uh yeah generated obviously yeah. and then hack street boys and then also some of the other teams uh we had the yeehaws out here uh physically present with us so thanks for hanging out um as well like you know like i said i'm looking at the points i'm seeing like most of the teams got into the network um, and got to kind of and play around with it. So, and then yeah, obviously thanks to the sponsors and stuff for covering the cost that, that it takes to, uh, to host, you know, you know, 20, uh, active directory environments, uh, you know, in, in the cloud. So yeah, thanks to them. Um, awesome. No, I definitely loved it. Uh, and, uh, already starting to get poked up. Uh, I will say, uh, my, my discord is a bit unwieldy right now, way too messages pending for me. So, uh, bear with me. I'll try to respond to some of you guys. I think Snowscans just hit me up. So super stoked. Uh, I'll try to talk to you all later uh, once we hop on this and then, but definitely closing ceremonies. Uh, all the teams will be announced at closing ceremonies and then uh, we will work with the captains of the teams. So definitely please stay in contact with myself uh, via the, uh, the emails that you provided as well as the Discord handles and we'll work out logistics. Uh, but just give us a little bit of time to kind of work out the logistics and get the, you know, prizes and everything out to you all. Uh, you know, our, our sponsors need a little bit, and uh, I'm sure just like you all, I need to take a nap at some point. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit tired here, but uh, again, thank you all so much. And then, you know, huge shout out to uh, Omar 
uh, for kind of handling our, our streaming without Omar, uh, I would be struggle busting right now, trying to trying to juggle all of this. So huge shout out, Omar. Thank you so much for kind of coordinating a lot of this, you know, uh, making it possible so we can come to you live from the DEF CON floor and kind of sharing all this. Thank you. Thank you. It's quite the opposite. And um, I'm going to take the opportunity to actually congratulate some of the winners of the OSCP courses that we were giving away yesterday. Uh, we promised that we were going to announce it this morning, and I failed to do that. So <laughs> you can probably uh, take your money back now. <laughs> 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 but uh, the congratulations to Goodspeed, not just Bob, and Susan B123. Actually, pretty cool handles. So uh, you are the winners of the OSCP courses that we had yesterday. Um, we're going to announce more giveaways, you know, throughout the course, actually, probably even after DEF CON, we do have a, a couple of more prizes to actually give. So be in the lookout to a few things, you know, the Discord server, definitely Twitter. And of course, we're going to be announcing many, many other things in the upcoming, in the upcoming hours or so. Now, the other thing is that our next event is a Hacker One Activity Con and once again, you know, thank you, Nahamsek. He's actually been instrumental, definitely on day one with all the the panels, all the interviews, you know, all the streaming. So thank you, thank you again, Ben, um, or Nahamsek, uh, for all your collaboration and all your work here. But we'll help to see you at, at Hacker One Activity Con, and the details about that con is in the bottom of the screen, and the Red Team Village will be there. So with that, let's go in a quick break. And then we're going to be, uh, again, announcing a whole bunch of other prizes a little bit later on. Thanks a lot, Omar. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.
constructive feedback. So hopefully we'll come back next time we, we deploy this. Knock, knock, who's there, this guy? What's up, red teamers? What's up, DEF CON? It's your favorite fake, brilliant billionaire investor. My little birdies, cheap, 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 cheap. I like cheap things, that's why I'm rich. They let me know that Lunar Fire is under fire, but that is a Tres Comas company. And that's got so much smart shit in it. And so it's unhackable. Or is it? No, it isn't. Not even you boy and girl geniuses can do it. You would have to be the human equivalents of cars with doors that open like this or like this. Are you? Can you? Will you? Don't. All right, we're back live. And uh, once again, congratulations to AI Generated, EPT, and Hack Street Boys. You were the winners of the CTF this year. And uh, one more time to announce the winners of the OSCP courses. Congratulations to Goodspeed, Not Just Bob, and Susan B123. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we will have a few additional prizes, so stay tuned and definitely be uh, in the lookout in Twitter. I'm going to try to bring the DEF CON uh, floor right now live to the stream. So bear with me just one second. Hey, Wes, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, so we're... Uh... You know, again, congratulations to all the teams, right? AI generated, EPT, Hack the Street, as well as, you know, the entire top 20 that made it to finals, right? That is huge to kind of make it uh, to finals. Uh, so great, uh, you know, showing. Uh, I hope all the teams learned something, right? Uh, I think we all learned something about defender ev evasion, uh, as well as, you know, on, on some spear fishing, as well as you kind of got further in the network, you know, uh, defender was out there, was catching a lot of different things, whether it was the actual binaries or heuristics. So definitely a lot of fun, and uh, definitely I saw a few teams learned a little bit about some CI/CD. Uh, there's, um, I think, uh, some some fun experiences. Uh, some teams kind of, you know, deleted some services or overwrote, uh, broke some of the things, uh, but we were able to kind of restart it for them, get them going again like that. So a lot of fun and excitement out there. Uh, definitely for the teams, you know, kind of do that supply side interdiction, get in that CI/CD pipeline, pop out into another network. Uh, and then from there, just kind of pivot and uh, and go. So it was a huge, huge experience. Uh, definitely loved it. Uh, I'm glad to hear, you know, kind of feedback from some of the teams. Oh, uh, yeah, but we're here at the DEF CON floor. We're just kind of wrapping up now, take, taking down the projectors, things like that. Uh, as we kind of clean up in the contest floor here, we'll uh, make our way to closing ceremonies. Uh, with that, you know, they'll make some announcements uh, for everything that's kind of going on uh, for all of our top three teams in the finals. But again, like, we just want to thank all of our balls, uh, every single player that kind of came out, uh, a lot of points on the board, a lot of flag submissions. So I, we definitely think everyone had a lot of fun. And then with that, you know, our, our top teams were just, you know, showing that skill and then uh, making it to the finals. Yeah, we had a lot of great feedback too. Um, I know I've, I've learned quite a few things and we're going to go make it better for next time. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate like all the the, the, the good vibes and, uh, and constructive feedback and the, the very minimal hate. Like obviously this community is like really great and amazing. and. I've loved like interacting with you all. So if you, uh, if you slide in my DMs at some point, like we, we interact or I helped you with a hint or something like that. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys all uh, being so cool. So thank yeah, you. definitely. And then uh, especially with, uh, you know, the CTF uh, next year, uh, a lot of lessons that you all learned. Uh, all I can say is that we're going to take it up another notch uh, and it'll be difficult. So again, we'll have another kind of red team uh, engagement, right? A little pen test engagement here. So, you know, kind of bring your A game, kind of prep, uh, probably uh, review some notes uh, from what you did this time and uh, kind of be ready to take it up to that next level. So we uh, definitely looking forward. Uh, follow us kind of throughout the year, uh, you know, ActivityCon, everything else. Those will be a lot of our kind of more standard Jeopardy style kind of board qualifiers rounds. So kind of follow us throughout the year. A lot of, uh, you know, new challenges will be coming out. And then definitely DEF CON next year, we'll have the full blown scenario at the end huge you know huge environments all that great stuff all right so thanks again and as Wes just mentioned our next event is hacker one's activity con and uh, with that i think that this is a close for, at least for this stream if you're on site 
please go to the, the official closing ceremonies from DEF CON. And before I lose my voice as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, thanks again. Thank you, Adamar. Uh, Absolutely. Bye.